In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog, a land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and with fire came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then from the dark they came, and found the souls of lords within the flame. Nito, the first of the dead, the witch of Isolith, and her daughters of Chaos. Gwyn, the lord of sunlight, and his faithful knights, and the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenged the dragons, Gwyn's mighty bolts peeled apart their stone scales. The witches weaved great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death and disease, and Seath the Scaleless betrayed his own, and the dragons were no more. Thus began the Age of Fire. Though eventually, the first flame flickered and waned, and so too did the power of the lords who feared the coming age of dark. Desperate, the Witch of Isolith attempted to recreate a new flame using her soul of life, but instead chaos emerged, corrupting the Witch and her daughters, and spreading across the land, giving birth to wicked demons. Left with no other choice, Gwyn divided his soul of light amongst his disciples and sacrificed himself to the flame, prolonging the Age of Fire another thousand years. But soon the flames will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now there are only embers, and man sees not light, but only endless nights. And amongst the living are seen carriers of the dark sign that brands the undead, those who are cursed to be reborn after death but eventually degenerate into insanity. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north, where they are locked away to await the end of the world. This was to be the fate of one particular lowly undead. Or so he thought. He awoke, cold and frail, to a heavy thud in his cell, a body and a key. A knight peered down from the skylight above. After unlocking his cell, the undead found his savior slouched on the ground and near death. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon, then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I, we're both undead. Hear me out, will you? Regrettably, I have failed in my mission, but perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family, Thou who art undead art chosen, and thine exodus from the undead asylum maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Finally, after an eternity of rotting away day after day, there was hope. His purpose, having lifted his withered heart, the now chosen undead was swept away to Lordran. The kingdom was teeming with undead, lost souls waiting to go hollow, and those who already had. Some were overcome with the nihilism of the age. Only few still were emboldened with faith, or perhaps they were just fools. The task was simple ring the bells and discover the true fate of the undead. Getting there was proving more difficult. After countless struggles and clashing of steel, after climbing the tallest castle and traversing the deepest depths, both bells were rung and a serpentine creature arose from the darkness. Chosen undead, your fate is to succeed the great Lord Gwyn, so that you may link the fire, cast away the dark, and undo the curse of the undead. To this end, 
you must visit Anorlondo and acquire the Lord Vessel. Fill the vessel with powerful souls, commensurate to the great soul of Gwyn. Scarce few possess such brilliant souls. Grave Lord Nito, the Witch of Isolith, the Four Kings of New Londo, who inherited the shards of Gwyn's soul, and Lord Gwyn's former confidant, Seath the Scaleless. Collecting the Great Lord's souls would be no easy feat, but with each fallen fiend, the chosen undead grew stronger. The vessel would need to be retrieved, but was guarded by powerful servants of the king. Proving his strength, the chosen undead was granted audience with the beautiful Guinevere, daughter of Lord Gwyn and Princess of Sunlight. O oh, chosen undead, I have awaited thee. I bequeath the Lord Vessel to thee, and beseech thee. Succeed Lord Gwyn, and inheriteth the fire of our world. Thou shalt endeth this eternal twilight, and avert further undead sacrifices. The Vessel would now need to be filled with the powerful Lord's souls, and it was time to pay their owners a visit. Nito, keeper of the soul of death, who slumbered motionless in his crypt, got a rather rude awakening. Seath the Scaleless, gone mad in his pursuit of sorcery, locked up the feisty undead. But iron bars could hold him no longer. The Witch of Isolith, deformed and confined to her bed of chaos, thrashed with all her might. The landscape was treacherous indeed, but with a leap of faith, the monstrosity was felled. The final soul hid in the blackness of the abyss. The chosen undead journeyed deeper and deeper into shadow. The dark was thick and heavy, but the ring of a fallen knight would keep him safe from the encroaching corruption. The four kings emerged from the vacant abyss, surrounding the undead, but one by one, with a flash of his sword, the kings were no more. Undead warrior, conqueror of the four kings. A familiar, devilish, toothy grin crept into view. I am the primordial serpent, Darkstalker Kath. I can guide thee and illuminate the truth. Your ancestor claimed the Dark Soul and waited for fire to subside. And soon the flames did fade and only Dark remained. Lord Gwyn trembled at the Dark by sacrificing himself to link the fire and commanding his children to shepherd the humans. Gwyn has blurred your past to prevent the birth of the Dark Lord. You must destroy the fading Lord Gwyn, who has coddled fire and resisted nature, and become the Fourth Lord, so that you may usher in an age of dark. And now, a dilemma. Which primordial serpent was to be trusted? Either way, the Lord of Cinder himself needed to be conquered. With the Lord Vessel engorged and placed upon the altar, the great door guarding Gwyn was opened. The smell of ash and dying ember on the stale air. Still nursing the first flame, Gwyn turned on the intruder and challenged him to a final duel. The chosen undead, embodying the souls of great knights, beasts and even demons, and burning with their collective power, dealt the final blow to the ancient lord. With Gwyn defeated, the undead had one final task, the fate of all chosen undead. Reignite the flame and perpetuate the age of fire, or allow the flame to dwindle and bring about the age of man. Which path was chosen? Only the gods know.
Osiris. <laughs>